much. Um, he forgot to tell you that Reverend Connie is a crybaby. <laughs> <laughs> It is an awesome, awesome feeling for me tonight when I heard that this is our last student forum format. It's not our last format? Oh, okay, all right. I was going to think what is going on. My time is up. But anyway, I have been with campus ministry and student forum for the longest. And I am just overwhelmed. So send to me as you pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon me. Melt me. Pour me. Mold me. And use me in a special way, O oh Lord, tonight. To disclose the premise of the poem. This is my prayer right here, right now, in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, and search each one of us tonight as God's words fall upon our ears and our hearts. We offer ourselves to you, Lord, in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. The scripture this evening comes to you now from Eugene Peterson, one of my favorite, The Message. I will read it one more time for you. And it says, God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God. God's various expression of power are in action everywhere, but God is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits from it. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit and to all kinds of people. The varieties are wonderful. For I stand before you as a person, as a girl that was in the project that came from a single family with a mom that says, if you want it, if you believe it, then you can achieve it. And I never thought I would be here or be a campus minister. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. I come this evening to share how God has used me. And if he can use me, young people, he can use you too. All you have to do is put yourself in the posture of being used and being able to say yes to the call. The text this even speaks of various gifts from God's calling. All are not called to preach, and my God, all are not called to sing. All are not called to teach, and my God, all are not called to cook. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> all of us have a different, different, different gift that's given to us in order that we may build the kingdom of God. However the call is, it is upon you. But it's not about you, says the writer of Purpose Driven Life. What, about five years ago, everybody was reading Purpose Driven Life. Even I did a workshop on Purpose Driven Life with students, with faculties, with everybody. Let them know, it ain't about you, so get over it. It is not about you. It's all about God's glory. 
for building of the kingdom, for our good, and for the salvation of the lost, are yielding to be used by God and God alone. I want you to know the word call means that it's a search, and the search is on, and you're about to be set up. You're about to be set up. The Holy Bible will tell you about a couple of people that got set up by God. People such as Moses, Noah, David, Abraham, Mary, Jesus' mom. Hey, hallelujah. Various prophets, the major and the minor. Phoebe, you'll find her in Romans, who I think I much like. You'll find Samuel. You'll find Jeremiah. Consuela, who stands before you tonight. Yes, Consuela, for those of my friends in campus ministry who said, where did that come from? Well, that is my name. That was the name that was to be given to me, but the people couldn't spell it, so the nun said, keep it short and simple. Let her figure out how to spell it when she goes to school. <laughs> so I did. The name Consuela. Always know your name. Because in your name, your calling, you will find. My name, Consuela, means that I'm constant and I'm consoling. I'm always giving. And over the years, I have found out I am constantly giving. I have, in one year, when I was being, uh, when I was studying for diaconal, I found out that I had given 45 people a place to live in my home. I'm not going to tell you how many people I fed. So then I realized, yes, God, that's a calling in my life. When I was ordained, I was ordained June the 9th, 1999, which is really my birthday. But then the document said it was June the 8th, so I said, oh God, they are confused again. Here I am, Lord, what is my birthday? But when God said to say yes to your ordination, I think I was only deacon or diaconal, they did not want to be ordained when I was going to school. Everybody else was fighting and they wanted to be ordained and I did not wish to be ordained. I said, the, the bishop, bishop ain't ordained. Why do I have to be ordained? Just let me do what I got to do. I just want to serve God. But I want you to know that God always gets God what God wants. I wish to thank all of my friends. Before I can go any further, I must just share some people, like Joe did last night. Never forget that you have a team helping you to get through the calling. I wish to thank Shelton Barry. I mean, <laughs> even though the Skype thing didn't work as well as we wanted to work, I'm excited about what he attempted to do and what God did with him. Shelton is my first military assistant chaplain in campus ministry. Luther Felder was one of my first persons to, to give me a place to stay in Texas when I needed a place to go to school and his family. Meg, another deacon, I'm excited about her. We didn't get to work as close as I wanted her to work with her, but she knew I was always there. Bridget Young. Bill Campbell, I worried him to death. Jan Rivera. Gertie. Oh, Lord. I learned the workings of student forum from being around Gertie. <laughs> I think we put the first book together, Gertie. We have our first notebook, we put that together. They work hard. They work hard for you all. But there are so many, and especially my mom, who gave me back to God. Watch those moms, like Hannah. Hannah prayed for a child. She got it. My mom prayed for a daughter. She got her. But she also promised God that I'll give her back. And I didn't know that either until I realized, golly, I'm not doing what I thought I was going to do. I want you to know that I'm a pianist, and I wanted to be a concert pianist, and I practice hard every night, every day. I've been playing the piano since I was five years old. My desire was to be in Paris, France. The closest I got to Paris, France was on Paris Avenue, 3020 Paris Avenue in New Orleans, Louisiana. <laughs> With a studio with 26 students that I had for my own studio. I have found out that when you make plans and you tell God about your plans, 
It becomes your disappointment for his new appointment in your life. Let me say that one more time. It becomes your disappointment for God's new appointment in your life. If you want to make God laugh, tell him you're praying. <laughs> a calling, young people, is a change in your life and everybody around you. Everybody that surrounds your life, when you really recognize that you've got a calling in your life, everything changes. Nothing stays the same. I want you to know that being a campus minister was not what I thought I would do. Being a deacon was not what I thought I would do. But the position that I'm in is who I am. I have served as a musician equipping others in four states, 15 churches, one country in Honduras, Rokan, and a mass choir in New Orleans called the Memphis Connection. I have served in diverse areas that I never thought I would. I've taught blind children to not sing but to play the piano. I never thought me, moi, would be what God has chosen. I tell you that at a time of my life, I start running and saying to God, not me. I had a Jonah spirit on me. You know about Jonah and the whale? Well, I had that spirit until my neck was broken in my classroom. A door fell on me and broke my neck. For three years, I could not play the piano, could not sing a note, and could not walk. But within those three years, I had a chance to lay flat on my back and be served by everyone else and hear God's voice. How did I hear God's voice? Not through my ears. I had to start hearing God's voice through my heart. You don't always hear through your ears, and especially now since you guys got iPods. <laughs> I don't know how y'all gonna hear. <laughs> so therefore, remember, Reverend Connie say, listen for it in the heart. It's within the heart. Remember, that God gifts are different. In nature, God's gifts are different in power and effectiveness. God is wisdom, and God is gracious to each and every one of us. God calls us to serve. He even called me to serve as a lay speaker, and I thought it was just going to play the piano for them. Before I knew it, I was not just playing the piano, you guys. I was the secretary. I became the person, the public relation person. And before I knew it, I was the director of the lay speaking school for the district. I didn't even know what lay speaking was. <laughs> but God put me in something again. I don't know. But the one thing I like about what I have learned, I'm teachable. Are you teachable? I'm teachable. And within serving the late speaking school, when I went to the late speaking school to work with them in New Orleans, they only would teach three classes. But when I got it, it must have been the time, God gave me a vision to expand that. I constantly called Nashville. I expand the classes from three classes to nine classes to 12 classes. When I left New Orleans, I had 30 persons that had gone to lay speaking school and was now acknowledging their call to the ministry. I had a pediatrician, Dr. Joseph Atwood, that was making great money, but in that school, he was able to say yes to God. He heard his calling and he let his business go 
He let his private business go as a medical doctor, and now he is the minister of the Louisiana Conference. Because he heard in that school, God used me for such a time as this to help others to decide how to hear their call. 